for each Artemis launch, is it time to swap the SLS for two Falcon Heavy launches? Now, there are a couple of reasons why this may be the case. One, it costs about $2 billion per launch, and that's excluding the development costs. So we're looking from now on, and the cadence is less than one flight a year. This comes from someone who is a huge SLS fan and would definitely like to see the remaining SLS to go into action. But how could it work? Well, first of all, a Falcon Heavy launches... So the two side boosters return to launch site and then the center core is expended. So this puts the Orion with the European service module into orbit. There is the launch escape system which is vital along with the four astronauts. Then shortly after the second Falcon launches, once again the two boosters return to launch site and the center core is expended. Now, instead of launching the Hydrolox upper stage from the SLS, instead, an ex slightly extended upper stage with about 50 extra tons of propellant is launched. This links together, then this powers it to TLI. Now, what could the mission plan look like? First of all, you can't have eight flights for the price of one because it's not just the cost of launching the rockets. There are other associated costs. So let's say that you could replace it with two, possibly three flights. So let's take a look at the 2025. Flight two, prove Earth orbit rendezvous, that you can actually connect the stages together and test the Orion for re-entry with proper testing, not just simulated testing. Flight 3, an uncrewed flight to the moon, a little bit like Artemis 1, again confirming Orion re-entry from the higher velocity returning from the moon. And finally, Flight 4, crewed lunar return. What about 2026? Well, I'm going to show just two flights. The first one is docking with the Gateway, which is launching on another Falcon Heavy, and the iconic first landing. Now, what about 2027 to 2029? I'm not showing beyond this, because I think eventually that Starship in the 2030s will replace this. So this is really looking for the end of the decade. Flight 7 to 12, if it's two flights a year, or 7 to 15, if it's three flights a year. So see, these are some of the things you could do. Firstly, more landings, establishing a permanent lunar base, a small one initially, rotation at the lunar gateway, and obviously the resupply of both of these bases. Now, what are some other practicalities to see if this really works? Well, the first thing is it has to be crew rated. But if you think about it, the Falcon 9 is already crew rated. And as the Falcon Heavy uses effectively the same components, it doesn't seem to be a huge step to consider that you could actually get the Falcon Heavy crew rated. What about actual low Earth orbit capacity? It's stated at 57 tons by recovering the two side boosters. We don't have real data on it, but there's no reason to suggest that SpaceX doesn't know what the real ability is. Cadence. The problem with the SLS is you build so few of them that you have such a low cadence. SpaceX already has a very high cadence for the Falcon 9, and it seems that it wouldn't really be a problem for the cadence for the Falcon Heavy. You may need to actually get a second pad going. You may need to actually have 39A and 40 so that you could launch, uh, not back to back, but pretty close together. Extended upper stage. Possible? Doesn't seem too difficult. You'd still have just the one Merlin vac. You'd have slightly larger tanks. And you already have 57 tons of payload, a little bit extra for the tanks, and 50-odd for the extra stage. And by using the rocket equation, looking at 
the efficiency, the specific impulse of the Merlin engine and the actual mass of the Orion, it gives it just about enough delta V to get to TLI. Rendezvous. SpaceX already has excellent ability at rendezvousing with the ISS, so it shouldn't be a major issue to rendezvous with a second Falcon 9. Finally, docking in connection. This would take some ability to mate them together, but you are talking effectively of two autonomous stages. It's not like the European service module with Orion, where you have your life support systems connected together, and that would be really difficult to assemble in space. Considering the complexities of Starship and the rest, it doesn't seem beyond the realms of possibility to be able to have any of these practicalities as show stoppers. So to sum up, is it time to swap the SLS for two Falcon Heavies for each Artemis mission? Drop a comment and tell me what you think.